The subject of our conversation today is Taoist Yoga. This remarkable direction of spiritual thought was created in China, where the spiritual development of incarnated people was guided by Huangdi since ancient time. The words Taoist Yoga, Taoism, originate from the Chinese word Tao. Which means the Creator, God the Father, and the word T means the Holy Spirit, which is the same as Brahman. The teachings of the Taoist Yoga, that is, the teachings about Tao and about mergence with it, were formulated and described by a divine disciple of Huangdi, by Lao Tse. Its competent and clear to the reader translation was published for the first time by us. One can find it in the book Classics of Spiritual Philosophy and the Present. Tao Te Ching, that is, book about Tao and Te, book written by Lao Tse, is a remarkable textbook on religion, a remarkable textbook. Let me note that it contains the same truth as the teachings of Jesus Christ, the Bhagavad Gita, and the other great literary works created by God. The difference between them is that the same methodology of spiritual development is expressed in them in slightly different words. And this is good, because this helps the readers, spiritual seekers, to cognize the truth. Putting it briefly, the essence of the Taoist teachings, teachings about Tao and Te, about the path of cognition of them and mergence with them, can be described as follows. One recognizes Tao, that is, God the Father, by developing oneself as a spiritual heart against the background of inner calm. We have to learn to love the beauty of the creation, to develop a careful and tender attitude toward it, 
to learn to merge with it by the consciousness. Then we can, having become a large and subtle spiritual heart, we can merge with T and then with Tao. In China and in some other countries of that region of our planet, these teachings about the beauty, calm, harmony, about mergence with God, had a major effect on the formation of the spiritual culture in those countries. The examples are key ceremonies, landscape parks, the arts of painting and photography, adequate to this religious philosophical direction. And even corresponding kinds of martial art. And when China and other neighboring countries adopted Buddhism, which is similar teachings about the path to cognition of the primordial consciousness. Cognition how? Through love. Through love for the creation and for the creator. Then, mergence of these two similar directions happened which resulted in Chang Buddhism. And now let's read how the path to Tao, which is the same as the primordial consciousness, God the Father, the Creator, is described by divine teachers, by Huandi, Lao Tse, and by their followers, in particular Huan and Han. Let's start with excerpts from our conversations with Huan Di. He said, the eternal is love. Civilizations come, flourish and disappear New life arises and vanishes in various corners of the universe. But love remains everywhere the unchanging basis of everything. Love is the language of life that God speaks in the universe. Love is the language that helps people understand each other. Love is the language that helps men understand God. After all, God is love. We asked, Huangdi, how did you cognize the Creator? 
He answered, Oh, it was so long ago that I cannot recall it. I became one with the primordial consciousness so long ago that it hardly makes sense to tell now my story. I was at the origin of the earth and all its development from the beginning up to the present days happened with my help. My mission is universal. Stars, galaxies, the entire manifested universe is contained in me. As for the seekers of me, I reveal with myself the unmanifested to them. I also give them a possibility to cognize the building material of the universe. I do not construct Brahmanic Mahadabals and almost always remain on the other side of the mirror. I come to the creation from my abode through the walls on the other side of the mirror. Let me note that you can read about this mirror in our book Eco Psychology. Being a universal divine soul, I joined the stream of life on the earth. As many others, I attained divinity not on this planet. But whatever various may be the path of ascent of souls, the law of development is one for all. There exists great boundless Tao, and there are individual souls created by Tao that have to learn to use correctly <coughs> the freedom of will granted to them by Tao. The freedom of will is a very interesting thing. It can bring the soul to falling into abyss, or it can bring the soul to unbelievable achievements. Everything depends on how one uses it. The correct use of the freedom of will brings one to impeccable life. There are three stages of mastering impeccability. The first stage that the soul has to master implies living in the world without disturbing its beauty, harmony and balance. This is the ethics of relationships with incarnated beings and with all other elements of the creation. I, as any other avatar, told people about the laws that they have to follow in their relations with the environment. I taught people ethics first of all. It is people that need to be taught ethics. Lower forms of life almost never disturb the harmony of the world. But people are inclined to violate the laws of Tao. A soul which is able to comprehend intellectually these laws to embrace them and to build its life in accordance with them, masters thus the first stage of impeccability. And Tao allows such souls, impeccable in earthly matters, to advance further. 
На второй ступени люди, соблюдающие Они должны слиться с красотой. They have to merge with beauty into one, have to become it. Of course, it does not mean adorning the body. It implies transformation of oneself as a soul into beauty. This stage is mastered through the methods of cleansing the chakras and other structures of the organism, and then through development of oneself as a spiritual heart. There may be many methodological variations here, but their essence is one. There is the heaven, Tao, and there is the earth, the material world. Also, there are souls that have to walk the path leading from the earth to the heaven, from yin to yang. At the end of this path, the soul merges with beauty of Tao and becomes it. The third stage of mastering impeccability implies that the soul merged with Tao learns to create actively the higher beauty on the earth with each its word, thought or deed, emitting thus to the world the sparks of beauty from the boundless ocean of Tao. I began my service as an avatar at the dawn of life of this planet. For millennia, China was the main area of my service. I brought to people the laws of morality and the laws of cognition of the highest. I manifested the love of God into this world, so that people may desire to become similar to me. There is the law of similarity. Similar things are attracted to each other. I sowed in souls the seeds of love, and then for many centuries I could attract these souls to myself with the universal magnet, with the great love. Many times I came to the earth. People remembered me in legends as the first divine emperor of China. There are two fundamental things that my disciples cognized and that allowed them to master successfully the rest. They are calm and the arms of the spiritual heart. Calm is the basis of the ability to dissolve oneself. Calm is the basis of the ability of the consciousness to remain unstained, to remain transparent. He who is able to become calm is able to cognize. There is the phenomenon of transparency. There is the transparency of water 
the transparency of air and tau is the subtlest transparency. In order to learn to cognize oneself, one has to feel in calm the arms of the consciousness, the arms of the spiritual heart. One has to learn to touch with the hands of these arms objects on the non-material plane as with the physical hands we touch material objects. One has to learn to feel the multidimensional space as water and to move in it with strokes of the arms as in the water. If one masters this, then the walls on the other side of the mirror are easy to cognize. And there one finds the great calm. A separate I cannot possess the absolute power. Emergence with the power is possible only if there are no manifestations of the individual I at all. That is, when you accept the events without desiring some particular outcome for yourself. Only then you are invincible. My life is an unceasing development, an unceasing advancement to the new. I never remain the same. I am always changing. Everything existing, everything that happens is directly related to me. In the depths of me is the origin, the beginning of everything. From there, from my depths, comes the power that gives beingness to everything. Everything exists because I gave it the possibility to be. Now you can understand that behind every thing, behind every event, there is me. All manifestations, even those appearing most despising to you, may take place only because I granted them such a possibility. Therefore, do not condemn anything or anyone. The great boundless ocean of Tao is the basis of the manifested world. Nothing exists on itself independent of Tao. Everything in the world of the creation becomes manifested and disappears with time, but Tao remains, living, ever-existing. Let everyone try to feel this, confronting everything transitional, limited in the material world, with the eternal, infinite life of the ocean of Tao. For those who have realized this relation, it becomes clear to what goal one has to aspire in life.
This is help them to make the right choice and to avoid becoming deluded by viewing something in the material world as the essence of life. We asked Huangdi, tell us please something of your biography. He answered, of which one? Tell something that can be useful to us or something that is pleasant for you to recall. Well, one of my inclinations was quite different from the others. That time I had seven strong disciples whom I initiated into the final stages of Buddhi Yoga. All they were to me like children. All they were to me like brothers. Every one of them could jump after me into the abyss or enter into fire without hesitation. All they listened to me with their minds, hearts and consciousnesses. It was a rare fortune. It was like shining of seven suns that later merged simultaneously into the Father. Such things rarely happen in the history of the universe. You know what a group meditation is. The power of merged synchronously acting consciousnesses increases by many times. It was remarkable. They aspired to me, and I guided them. In the universal depths, I accepted them and dissolved in the infinity of the Creator. When later they came to the earth, they took sometimes the name Huangdi. This name was there by the right of inheritance, and to me it seemed sometimes that it was me incarnated again on the earth. Now excepts from conversations with Lao Tzu. He said, yes, the ancient Chinese civilization is one of those important cultures that humanity still remembers about. Its development from the very beginning was guided by the avatar Huan Di. It is since that time that people began to call by the name Tao the one and indivisible whole, God in the aspect of the primordial consciousness. Tao is above everything and in the depths, beneath everything. It is beyond understanding of the ordinary mind, yet it can be cognized by a developed consciousness. Tao is the highest, the most subtle and blissful, indivisible into male and female, into left and right, into more and less perfect. It creates. It manifests with itself the original essence of all things and phenomena, yet it is not these things or phenomena. Tao is omnipresent. 
Everything in the world of matter has certain limits, but Tao is unlimited and eternal. Only those dedicating their lives to cognition of it and living in love and calm can cognize primordial Tao. Millennia pass, but the teachings about Tao and about the path to it remain among people. We asked, you said that you were a disciple of Huangdi. Yes, once it was my time to come so close that I began to see him. I managed to become calm and silence to such an extent that I could hear him. Huangdi began to speak and I wrote down the text called Tao Te Ching. Tell us, please, how did you learn? He answered, from a certain stage, a consciousness developed in past incarnations receives a direct guidance from Tao. There is a stage in soul's development when the teachings of the immortal ones can be not only understood in words, but also realized in life. Such was my last incarnation. I came to the earth to renew and to purify the teachings about Tao from everything superficial and to leave this knowledge to people. We asked, legends say that you were a philosopher, a historian and a keeper of ancient archives, that you retired and went traveling, and that a guardian on the border did not let you pass until you expound your teachings in a written form. Is that true? Yes. As anyone who has achieved the goal and crosses the border of life death on the way from the world of incarnated beings to the life in Tao, so I had to leave my message to people. And even before this, in the previous life, I was a disciple of Huangdi in one of his great incarnations. We asked, may we ask you to tell about Huangdi, about how he taught, how does God teach? Don't you know? He shows you the way and then creates obstacles for you to overcome. He teaches you subtlety and then suggests that you strengthen your power. He suggests that you become aware of yourself and then shows that there is no you, that there is only Tao. Softly and gently, as a calm, tender ocean, he embraces you and immerses you into himself. And then, in silence and infinity, there remains nothing of you. Then there is nothing but Tao, all pervasive, infinite, and above the ocean of Tao, 
There is light, which has names and forms. One of these names is Huandi. These names are as many as the rays of the sun. Among them there is also Lao Tzu. Did you see Huandi living in body? Yes, I saw him living in body, disappearing and appearing again. Yes, I saw him. I heard his words coming from his lips. I heard his words sounding in the depths of the spiritual heart. I heard the silence of his quietness in the depths of Tao. Could you tell a bit more about him? These are very ancient images from the life of China. Sunrise in the mountains, the Huanghe River rolls its waters to the sea, which is called the Yellow Sea now. Do you know why? The goldish light of the shining of the glory and greatness of Huandi reflected in it, and the water became filled with yellow goldish shining. The castle of Huandi. In its form it was similar to a giant multi-level pyramid. White terraces on every level of the pyramid allowed one to walk it around. In order to come to the next level, one had to pass through a guarded gate into the inner rooms. There was a passage further to the next level. People who had not achieved a certain level of the development of the consciousness were not allowed to come to the higher levels. In the inner rooms of the highest level, Huandi accepted his closest associates and disciples. The first level was used for crowded meetings. Its giant gate opened outside, and through it solemn processions came out when ceremonies were performed. At that time, Huangdi granted to China not only the teachings about Tao, but also knowledge for the material world, writing system, mathematics, astronomy, counting of time and calendar, many things of medicine. All this became available to people. Also, his precepts about righteousness and order became the basis of welfare for centuries. Quietly flows the Huanghe River, the tops of the mountains are in the sky, and the earth itself is their firm base. Look in the eyes of Huangdi, and you will learn more. There are the eternal and unchanging teachings of God. There is boundless Tao. Everything created by Tao comes and disappears, but Tao remains. It can be described with the help of words, but there are immortal ones who have traversed the path and cognized Tao. We asked, tell us, Lao Tzu, do you have your places of power? He answered, yes, I do. 
I have many such places. Most of them are in China, but some are in other countries as well. I have been looking after the growth of many souls for many centuries. I like arts. I am a patron of those who, with a stroke of a brush on a paper, make viewers hold their breath and to peer at that unmanifest which becomes living on paper in the place where the picture left empty space. I am glad at the rhythm of verses which reveal quietness. I am a guardian of the traditions of calm, harmony and beauty, calm and love are the basis of the righteous beingness. Lao Tzu, please say something for beginners. He answered, the dense and coarse brings destruction, aging and death. Therefore, you should aspire in everything to the harmony and subtlety of the consciousness. Find beauty in the creation, in a tender flower, in a gentle wind, in a transparent brook, one must learn not to disturb this harmony by root actions. Then one has to cleanse in the heart and in the entire body a place for Tao. One has to learn to serve Tao, having become Te. This is a quality of the perfect ones. The perfect ones quietly tell to the world about the greatness of Tao. Seekers listen to them in the silence of the soul and grow in cognition and love. The subtlest has a great power to create and to spiritualize. Become similar to the subtlest and then you will be capable of embracing the whole. The warmth of the great sun melts down the remains of the lower cells and the light of love begins to flow freely through the bodies of those who have submerged themselves as consciousnesses into Tao. Then the immortality of Tao comes up through their bodies as they merge the consciousnesses with Tao and act from it as Te. This can be likened to a blossoming peach tree. Its branches imbibe the vernal life-giving current and produce beautiful flowers. In the same way, Tao comes up through bodies and manifests to the world the calm, light and wisdom of the depths. Having become rooted in the depths, the tree of love grows and begins to bloom giving to the world the fragrance of the truth. 
Listen in silence to how the blissful currents of the light of divine life come up. Allow Tao to manifest itself here. A non-doing of you is a doing of Tao. Come to know the great border after which there are no borders at all. The bottom of the manifested world is just a curtain of the world of the depths, which is infinite. Author and director of the film Vladimir Antonov Translated from Russian by Mikhail Nikolenko